Hello everyone! Welcome back to another building video. Today we are checking out the savanna biome, a biome that I often struggle with honestly because of the grass and leaf color and the fact that the villages in this biome tend to be bright orange, red, and yellow, colors that are not very neutral and can be a challenge to work with. Thankfully, I found this beautiful seed tucked into this little jungle biome, and I thought it was so beautiful and inspiring. I decided to transform it into a Japanese-inspired Minecraft village, and I absolutely love the results. Let me show you my process. We're going to be starting with the smaller hut over here. I love the colors in this hut and I thought that the glazed terracotta used in the vanilla village actually tied in really well with all of the oranges, so I decided to keep this accent throughout my entire build. The color palette used here really motivated me to keep going and the dark prismarine balances out all of those sunset reddish tones so so well. So that is what I decided to use throughout this build. We're going to be transforming three of these huts in the savanna biome in sort of a simple form. Remember, I'm not trying to recreate any Japanese village that actually exists. I was just inspired by the architecture style, so I decided to try to mirror it here in this village. This isn't actually Japan. <laughs> I feel like I should emphasize that. We're going to be building this village in sort of three districts. This first one that we're working on now is the farming area. I create this simple little farming house with lots of wheat around it and then some terraced farms to sort of add to that Japanese inspired feel. Fixing up some of the paths and then moving our attention back to the center, where we're going to be working on the map maker's room. The room with the cartography table in it, of course, I decided that this one should be quite tall so that they have a very good view. Now, the back part of this village is actually really interesting. It spawned with a massive cave. Normally, when I'm doing villages, I would just cover up the cave, but this one was so cool. I had the idea to sort of turn it into a quarry. So with two little huts, a ladder, and a crane, I decided that the villagers here would be mining emeralds. Makes sense, right? The centerpiece here is a Japanese gong, designed by my community admin Rowling. Thank you so much Rowling for inspiring me here. This is such a gorgeous design and it fits the village bells so well. Now we're going to be moving on to some of the smaller huts in the center part of the village. This hut here that I'm working on now spawned with the furnace in it, and so it is a perfect spot to have the blacksmith, even though this village didn't originally spawn with one. Having the black thing furnace and all of the blacksmith working stuff in this area just made sense since it's so near the quarry, it makes sense that they would be working here. A small hut off to the side for some living also makes sense since the villagers do need a place to live. One of the key parts of having a working village like this is you have to actually furnish the interior with stuff that the villagers can use, like beds and workstations and everything they need. That's what I'm doing with these few huts here. One of them I did turn into a tower, but the other two I kept rather small and hut-like. <laughs> Adding different varieties to the roof height helps a lot with a village like this because it is on fairly flat terrain. It makes it a lot more interesting to look at. Now we're going to be turning our attention back to that large central building. I thought this wasn't very proportional at first and a little bit awkward. Coming back to this and fixing that up with a third layer definitely helps. Now moving on to that third and final district. So, so far we have farming and mining and now we have fishing. I clear off this island over here and create a dock area and perhaps a fish market adding in a nice wide dock, some supporting walls, a market area with a big sign out front, and lots of crates for decoration. I love how this turned out, it makes the village a lot more original and unique. Now moving on to the animal pens, if you notice, this is a really busy area. I don't know what's going on, but for some reason everybody in this village wanted to watch me make some cow pens. I can't explain it, but it was really fun to do with so much company around watching me. <laughs> I also make a small chicken pen down below, and then turn my attention to the very last structure. This stonecutter's hut is going to be turned into a little house, perhaps for the merchant who works on the docks down here. This is the final structure that I had to transform, and with some final additions of some custom trees, some barrels and carts, street lamps, etc., this village is officially complete. Thank you so much for watching my process. How about we go check out this village in game now? I want to show you how it looks walking around. 
All right, everyone, here we are in game. Look at this jungle with the shaders on. Once again, I'm using my favorite shader pack, Sildur Shaders. I will link it down in the description below if you are interested. I just sort of wanted to take you through this village in game because I think it gives a completely different feel than from the time lapse sort of third person perspective. Let's hop up on this dock right here. The first thing I really love about this area is the big custom trees that I've been able to add mixed in with the regular vanilla trees. I love the look of these and I think that they add quite a lot to the design. This first area that we've just stopped off in is of course our farming area. I think the farms in this area suit it so so well. I'm really excited to take you through the rest of this village. Through the trees, you can see we've got our first two houses. These houses don't have a ton of decoration in them, just enough to keep them functional. So you'll see inside this one, I've just done a couple of bets. This makes the village function as an actual village, even though I have transformed their houses and pretty much completely changed the shape and sometimes even position of most of the houses, the villagers still recognize this as a place where they can live and work because there are roofs over their heads, there are beds for them to sleep in, and there are workstations for them to work at. And that's pretty much all that they need to be happy, thankfully. They aren't super demanding villagers. Let's go see them right now. <laughs> They're all hanging out over here farming. Hello guys, what are we doing today? Having a very important discussion, I think. <laughs> And the iron golem appears to have gotten himself stuck in the pond. Lovely. All right, let's head into this structure over here. I didn't do a whole lot of fancy interior, and the interior is definitely not Japanese-inspired interior, but once again, it's just enough to make the rooms functional. This one's our little book area and a couple of beds in here, again, making the village very, very functional. Same sort of thing over here, but this one has a little balcony design, which I just adore the view from here. Oh my goodness. Good day, villagers. <laughs> All right, let's head in around here. First stop is our blacksmith. I love the granite fireplace going up here. I think it matches the color scheme so well. And on the interior, I haven't done a whole lot of work, just a bed, some furnaces, a little smithing table right there. Simple areas for our lovely villagers to work. Some barrels are scattered around, lots of bushes, a house for some more villagers to live in. And over here we have our quarry, where of course they can mine all of their lovely emeralds. I haven't done a whole lot of work over here. It's mostly just an area that I kind of want to keep the villagers out of. I think if this was an area that I was playing in survival, I would probably finish fencing this off. But for the aesthetic right now, I currently have not fenced it completely off little bit dangerous, but I like living on the edge, and the villagers seem to like the farm, so it hasn't been an issue. If we head up this path right here, we will have our map maker's room. Again, just a very, very simple interior, a little bed area, and a desk for our cartographer to work at. And I absolutely love this deck out here. This gives us such a good view around our whole entire village. I just think it's lovely. All right, there is just one more area to check out. It seems like this villager is going to come with me. But we are going to go over here to the docks and to the animal pens. When I was building this area, it was super busy. <laughs> of course, it has calmed down a little bit now. It appears the cows have maybe driven everybody away. Hello, cows. Are you guys happy here? <laughs> I think this is the perfect pen for some cows and they've got such a beautiful view. I would be happy here if I was a cow. Thankfully, though, I am not. Let's continue. These houses here, once again, just very simple and functional, nothing too busy to worry about. And finally, in here, we have this sort of market area. This one I have actually sectioned off the bed a little bit, although the villagers have a little bit of trouble navigating to this because they think they can walk through trapdoors. Uh, they do eventually find their way if you leave them alone long enough. I did a barrel with a fish in it to match the sort of fish market feel that we're going for. And here is our dock area. This would be a fantastic area to build a boat and have it be a whole busy and bustling area. 
All right, everyone. I think that is all for this village tour. Thank you for coming on it with me. I know it was super quick because I didn't do a whole ton on the interior, but I hope I was able to inspire you and answer some of your questions. The acacia wood is something that is so challenging to work with, as is the savanna biome itself, but I think I was able to pull off an adequate result for my standards here. Let me know what you thought down in the comments down below. I can't wait to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone!